Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we have another episode brought to you by White Mountain Knives. Be sure to look them up for all of your knife and EDC needs, and be sure to use this code right here, WSW10, to save 10% off of this knife and any other knife you would like to purchase from White Mountain Knives. And this knife we have right here is uh, the latest, and not necessarily the greatest, but the latest design from one of my all-time favorite designers, Ray Laconico, and what this is is the Artisan Cutlery Andromeda. Now, before I go any further into this review, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 7.9 inches with a blade length coming in at 3.42 inches and a blade width of 900 thousandths. Blade thickness on this guy is a pretty nice and thin 106 thousandths with a blade material of S35VN. And we have a drop point style blade with a flat grind and a handle length coming in at 4.49 inches with a handle thickness at 433 thousandths. Handle width on this guy was uh, measured right, right around the middle here. And that was coming in at 730 thousandths with a handle material of, as you can most likely see, that is titanium. So a nice premium build here. Uh, we, of course, have that button lock locking mechanism and a user of a right hand only tip up carry. Uh, weight on this guy is coming in at 3.27 ounces. Uh, as I said, designed by Ray Laconico and a price of $200. So we're getting a little up there for, you know, for uh, for what we have for a, for a premium Chinese production knife from Artisan Cutlery. That's about what they go for nowadays. Um, and of course, with that code right there, you would save $20 off, which would bring this guy down to 180 bucks. That gets a lot better right there. Uh, now, before we get into this review, let's take a look at some size comparisons. And this is kind of a hard knife for me to, uh, to get some good comparisons for because I don't really have many knives like this. Um, but I do have the Benchmade 940, which is actually probably the best one I have. And of course, when the 940 comes out, so does the Kaiser Genie because they're kind of a lot alike. And uh, as you can see, I think those are probably the best two size comparisons you're going to get from this channel. Um, but I think they do pretty good justice in terms of what you're trying to get from a size comparison. Now, with that done and out of the way, let's start taking a look at this blade here. And uh, it is a very slender blade with a pretty nice edge of 19 thousandths. So I've always said, I've said it once, I'll say it before, anything under 20 thousandths is pretty much good for me. Um, wouldn't mind seeing it, you know, for 200 bucks. I guess I wouldn't mind seeing like a hollow grind and a little thinner edge for 200 bucks. That would be nice. Um, but I'm not super devastated uh, with 19 thousandths of flat grind. It, 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 it'll work. Um, and as with most and pretty much every Ray Laconico design, actually, not everyone, there's a couple that are just full flat grinds, but with a lot of Ray Laconico designs, you have that nice swedge. I love the way he works his swedges into his design, um, mainly from just an aesthetic standpoint, but they look great. And uh, it's always that extra little touch from Ray that I really enjoy. Um, one thing that I don't really enjoy that's not very impressive is the plunge grind on the knife. Now, this is not something I've talked about a whole lot in the past on this channel, um, but it's something I'm paying more attention to because as you have a knife, as you sharpen it, as you, as you use it and need to sharpen it, um, the plunge grind is very, very important. Um, there's some reviewers that talk about it and I will make an effort to address it more on my channel because it is a very important factor um, of the life of a blade and how it'll look over with use over time. And what a plunge grind is, is just the level of thinness you get from where the grind ends and where the, where the, where the edge begins, I guess. I, that may not have been the best description of it. Um, but basically what you're looking at is the level of thickness past the edge where you see it kind of rounding off. That's pretty thick there. What you want is that to be as thin as pretty much the entire bottom edge portion of the blade. So as you resharpen it, you don't get a smile, or you don't get anything uh, undesirable there, and you can maintain a nice thinness while keeping the blade looking good at the bottom as you're sharpening it. So uh, this plunge grind could definitely be better. Um, I think it would probably, you know, obviously could you, it's not going to, it's, it, you can still sharpen the knife and it's going to, you know, that's not a problem, but over time, as you sharpen it, um, 
the 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 thicker of a plunge grind or the the lesser quality i guess of a plunge grind you will start to notice things and it's just not ideal so i would have liked to seen a thinner plunge grind there um but obviously we just don't have that so that's kind of a bummer um another thing that i need to address that i really don't like and i've kind of hesitated even mentioning this on the channel because i don't even like saying the word um but artisan cutlery's logo they really got to change that um, it really looks to me like the combination of the New York Giants logo and a swastika. I, and then there's been people in the past that have commented like, oh yeah, it looks like a swastika. And I agree with them. I just don't like saying anything related to Nazis and all that sick crap on my channel. But it just, I'm just kind of tired of seeing it. I wish they would kind of change it up and get something different in there. And not to mention, it really just knocks off the aesthetics of a good blade. Like, this is a pretty nice design. And just having that logo kind of blocky, you know, a big blocky logo, it kind of counteracts the nice smooth lines you have from a design like this. So I would like to see him change that or do something with it. Maybe a little rebranding. I don't think that would hurt. Um, but on a brighter note, one thing I really do like on this blade are these thumb studs. Um, I like the way they are just the size of them and I like the placement of them and I like how they kind of have their own little spot on the blade up here right under the jimping. Uh, I think it looks good and also functions very well in that spot. So well done there. Now going into the handle and ergos, uh, the ergos are pretty decent. I, you know, for me, it, it maybe get, might get a little thin down at the bottom, not too thin. I mean, it still feels pretty good in hand. Um, no real issues. Love this clip. Uh, pretty much all the time anymore. I'm just, I'm a real sucker for a good flat milled titanium clip. So I like that a whole lot. Um, I also love the milling on this handle. Um, kind of soft and subtle, but also provides some texture and just a very nice uh, quality job of milling done on this. So looks really good. Uh, one thing that I really don't like on this handle are these back screws and how obnoxiously high they stick up. Don't know why that's that like that. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before, to be honest. I Unless my memory fails me, but that is just really high for some standoff screws and body screws. Um, now, I, would you feel it? I mean, I do feel like right now, I obviously feel it with my pinky. There are no hot spots or anything. I just, like, there's ways around that. <laughs> you can get flatter screws that will look a lot better and not look like that. So, just me, but for a $200 knife, yeah, get flatter screws. They're a little more flush with the handle. That would be much appreciated. Um, I like the backspacer they have here, or not the backspacer, but the uh, the hidden lanyard attachment. Uh, that's very nice for anyone who wants a lanyard. They can put one in there, and anyone who doesn't want it, it still keeps the handle looking nice and clean. Uh, even clean with obnoxious screws sticking way up out of the handle. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, other than that, the handle's pretty solid. Really don't like those screws being like that. Um, the button's in a good spot, and the actual button stick is pretty minimal. It's really, I would say it's definitely in, like, the lower echelon when it comes to the button lock stick on button lock. So, uh, pretty smooth operator. And in terms of just the actual action in the blade itself, this is a very smooth button lock. This blade is... Uh, pretty darn buttery smooth in terms of just how it moves on the pivot um i'm assuming i'm sure there's uh yeah there's bearings in there and uh they are working just great no issues with the action whatsoever really love the middle finger flicking on this very easy again you just push and pop blade flies out um thumb flipping thumb flicking is good because you also have that clip back there i really like using my uh putting my ring finger and pinky finger back there to kind of brace on the clip as i kick the blade out makes it very easy uh rather fidgety most button locks are fidgety but the smoother they are and the better the detent is and this one does have um, a good detent obviously doesn't have a detent ball because you guys probably know by now how button locks are you know uh, engineered um, but it just has a really good level of detent to where when you break it pops right out um, and very smooth action so very good action very good materials um, not many things I don't like about this knife 
Don't like the Artisan Cutlery logo. Don't like these standoff screws sticking up way too high, but I really do like the milling. I like the blade. Um, like I said before, it's really not my favorite Ray Laconico design. Um, it's decent. It's it, it's nothing that really knocks my socks off, but you definitely get that little hit array. You can tell it's his design. Um, and, it, and it's a pretty decent one. It's just kind of middle of the road for me. Um, but in terms of action, it's good. And in terms of value for 180 bucks, not too bad at all. So let me know what you guys think of this one. I really hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.